Hi guys, it's me, Andrea. I will show you some drawing today. And um, normally I I don't show that, but you know my camera is only or always running and this time I thought, come on, why not? It is not the most um, entertaining thing because it's a lot of drawing. And you can see here I start, I always start with a pencil because I erase a lot and uh, yeah, they always say when you practice you shouldn't use an eraser at all that yeah that you're not having the opportunity so but to me it's the most important thing I need my eraser what you can't see at the moment is um, a very clear picture of what I'm doing I have on the left side, and I thought you could see it, but the oh, the a tiny bit. So, it's a reference. I got that with the mail. It's um, connected to my loyal, loyal, loyalty, loyalty card. Main God, that's a difficult word. <laughs> loyalty card. Um, and uh, it has always a theme. This time it was autumn. And, um, yeah, in combination with some fashion and stuff. So, and that's, you can see it now, what I try to draw. So I'm starting here with the black lines now with the ink marker. And, um, of course, it's not looking like that. I didn't get the angle right. You know, perspective is always a problem with the face. Um, I'm sort of okay now with a front face and but when um, it's a bit angled I still struggle a lot but um, I go for it and this time I found this image so interesting that I thought yeah I will try it and I use a watercolor medium I use my Zix this um, clean brush or clean color real brushes from Zix I use here a very, very fine watercolour paper. It's um, uh, Moulin du Roy from, from Caran d'Ache. Not Caran d'Ache, from, uh, yeah, Can, um, Canson, Canson. Oh, gosh. And uh, it is a very, the very smooth one. Very, very smooth. You can... Work on top absolutely fantastically. Before you get that paper to peel, it takes really a lot. So that's why I use it always when I want to do something in detail and shading a lot. So that uh, with the cheaper ones, the cheaper paper. Of course, it peels so much quicker. And I'm not using my, my expensive paper here day by day. Of course not. But for stuff like that, even though it's only for practice, but it doesn't mean um, it, um, it's I only practice on cheap stuff, no. And it's, I think it's important to find out how the watercolor media is, is working on different, um, on different backgrounds or on different paper anyway. So, okay, I start here. Um, with greys and, and blacks and um, when you see me dabbing my paper down then uh, it was too concentrated and to I do that uh, when I want to get it off again I put a bit of water over it and then dab my paper on top so it gets so much lighter sometimes to get it even off depends on um, how far it has soaked into the paper of course so um, the pupils here, they were still wet and I tried to get um, an iris down but I had to wait until that was dry. It was always soaking into the um, paper and spread it out, you know, so that <laughs> why I had to wait. So, trying the lips. Now, the lips gave me to draw them, gave me a really hard time anyway. I find lips absolutely difficult. So, so difficult. Without letting them, you know, of course you can draw some lips, but without letting them look, yeah, ridiculous. It's really difficult. But, yeah, it's all the case of practicing, isn't it? So we all know that. 
Okay, you saw a tiny bit on the left on my, my reference that it was all about um, the red color here. She's having, you only can see the color from the code and that was in this um, yeah, check pattern here, this, this red. And I use here still my six and I fill in the lines and then I go with my water tank brush and blend it out because that's the same on that picture that I um, have the whole coat this red and the the lines are a bit bit more or yeah darker so that's what I thought get the best and the glasses were a tiny bit of yellow that's what I'm trying here of course the background is still water soluble medium I was very very carefully with uh, working here with the yellow color but of course it's a tiny bit smudged but that's okay so what I do here is now a little detail work you know it's a bit of shading you really can't see it um, on on the video at the moment I think because the shading with this very very light gray here is very it's a light shade, really light shade. I didn't want to overdo it, and um, that's what this reference picture is all about. Very light, very gentle, and that's what I wanted to keep. Yeah, and I, but I couldn't go on like that. You know, I needed a background, and that's what I use here. Violet, put it down and blend it out with my water tank brush. I can't leave stuff alone. I should have left it without any background, but yeah, what the point when the fun already stops? <laughs> I, I put it here down a bit uh, stronger on the edges and then blend it out a bit more on the bottom, of course, and on the top it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. I drag it around on the other side as well, but as I said, I want to get lighter and lighter. And then I thought, hmm, yeah, nice background now, but nothing's going on really. So I'm going on. First I sketch a bit here with some dark red light, same red, but uh, in some straight lines. I wanted to give it a bit more cleanliness. Yeah, I wanted to finish these lines. They were a bit messy and not that defined and that's what I wanted and it's of course for a bit of shading and then I yeah the eyes weren't perfect it was a bit darker on the reference on top there that's why I go in again change that and then on the right you can see the right or the left eye her left eye there yeah the face wasn't really defined you couldn't see through the glasses that the face um, stops there or oh, that's that's the edge of the face and of course then the glasses they were on the picture really dark black that's why I changed here and that makes a huge difference it gives a really good contrast spike it much better and then I got this um, rub on here with the Eiffel Tower and I thought that's perfect it's you know fashion Paris fashion yeah and that's what I thought fits perfectly but I didn't want to put it somewhere you know my idea then was to um, rub it down here and give the impression of that it is behind her so I you know, protect it here with one of this backing paper rub it down and then go on on the other side of her order on on top of her collar and here protect it again and that gives a really good impression of uh, the Eiffel Tower is there in the background I think it I will ground it later but then you know I had all this this rub-ons um, out and you know I I've often told you that I have tons of rub-ons and never use them and I said, oh, come on, go for it. And I decorate a bit here, not a bit, but here and there with different rub-ons I got here with this uh, dots for the 
edges and here I ground the Eiffel Tower with some tiny lines, nothing special, just give the impression of it stands on the ground, it's not hovering in the middle of the picture. So and then I went on with all sorts of advertisement uh, signs here and yeah, <laughs> couldn't resist. But I think at the end uh, it looks quite good and the good thing is most of it is black and white or in black, and black, black uh, words so it really fits well apart from some of these uh, flowers there in green but that's okay. I go over with my um, uni ball here and define some lines, not a lot, but that's it. I think I put in some sketchy lines here, here with a very fine ink marker, but that's it. You will see the close up coming now, and if you like it, please leave some thumbs up. I know it now then you like that you like stuff like that, and yeah, leave even a comment um. Uh, I had fun, and even though it's it's something for me really, yeah, I I need to concentrate a lot. It's it's a lot of work for me, but uh, it, I really like to do that every now and again. So I say goodbye. I thank you a lot for watching, guys, and I hope I will see you soon with my next video. Have a fantastic time. Bye bye.